Good day and welcome to another webinar in our Lunch and Learn webinar series. My name is Kobe Hayes. I am a research psychologist here at JVR Psychometrics. And in today's session, I want to talk to you about using the meta to assess innovation and um, entrepreneurial talent. Before we start, I just want to take a quick look at what was promised to you, the actual viewer, in the abstract when you decided to register for this webinar. There was a bit of a write-up about what would be covered in this webinar. And there I said that this webinar will look at the facets of entrepreneurship as measured by the actual assessment, the meta but that we will also address specific findings from studies that um, we at JVR conducted within a variety of different contexts. To be able to just give you a full idea of um, what exactly the assessment comprises of, but also um, some of the things that were highlighted in our studies to show how the assessment can work within these contexts. In addition to that, however, um, just to set the scene, I would also like to talk a bit about entrepreneurship, um, why it is important and what it looks like in South Africa at the end of the day. And then have a look at innovation, um, this whole concept of innovation, what it is, and then also a little bit about disruption a few slides later in the actual presentation just to give an indication of um, how these two specific concepts um, link to one another firstly, but then also how they will link to the meta and to today's uh, presentation surrounding the use of the meta. Then, of course, we will look at the actual tool in a bit more detail. So spend some time looking at the development of the meta and then look at how we can uh, apply the meta in what different contexts. It can be used, and in that section, I also want us to briefly go through a case study that the developers of the Meta um, has actually supplied of where they used it with great success. To start us off then, um, the importance of entrepreneurship. We cannot really talk about measuring something unless we know why it is important. And literature is currently showing us that companies that innovate, um, those ones that can come up with new novel things, that can find ways to adapt to the changing environments, are more likely to survive and then even to thrive in the fast changing competitive world. We all know that uh, the world of work is changing with the fourth industrial resolution and lots and lots of talk about computers, technology, robots, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of these topics floating around and how they could impact on the world of work. So it becomes more and more important for companies to be able to innovate and keep up with these new things to um, be able to still remain competitive at the end in this market to make sure that they do still survive and that they are not lost in the sea and um, at the end of the day, fail at what they are doing. We also see that the period of time during which larger corporations can enjoy um, their period of dominance is shrinking. We are no longer living in a world where single entities can hold an entire market. Uh, we see an onslaught um, of smaller companies, more younger or innovative companies that are coming into the market and playing in the same field, in the same market, within the same realm of some of the more established companies. And they are becoming actual real competition for these established firms. So that period of dominance is really no longer that large or that um, comforting to hold on to anymore. We know that innovations can disrupt companies and industries in a matter of years. If we think about um, how quickly something like Uber has taken off of the ground, um, even something like social media and how quickly it has penetrated the market and has actually reached single households all across the world and becomes a form of a um, product or service that people end up using. 
Of course, then the natural business cycle will dramatically be accelerated, um, not only by technology and innovation, but also by the desire or the need to keep up with this. You can no longer just stick to the model of how things used to be done, of what has worked in the past. And no matter who you are, no matter how big your company is, how small it is, how established or how new, nobody is immune to this disruption. Innovation is coming um, and we need to be able to show the entrepreneurial talent or abilities to be able to deal with this um, changing world, with the changing technology, with the changing needs and all of the things that come with those aspects. So, of course, it calls for a more entrepreneurial approach, not only in how we do things, but in how we look at people at the end of the business day. Um, we need to be able to know what entrepreneurial talent look like and know who will be able to help um, organizations in going forward. Looking at the actual state of entrepreneurs in South Africa, and my next few slides are based on a report by Seed Academy called the Real State of Entrepreneurship Survey. Um, this is a survey that I have been doing now since 2015. Um, it's the first time, or the third time that I have run it now consecutively. And it really gives a great overview of what entrepreneurship look like in South Africa. And for the specific report that we are dealing with, they surveyed over 1,200 entrepreneurs within the South African context. Just to give a bit of a background in terms of entrepreneurship and what it looks like demographically in South Africa, we see that uh, it's still more prevalent um, to find male entrepreneurs than females, but that, that gap is actually getting smaller in the consecutive surveys that they have run. The majority of the entrepreneurs that were surveyed um, classified themselves as youth. In other words, people under the age of 35. Um, but there is also a decline in that number of people. So it seems like we are finding more and more people that are possibly a bit older um, also venturing into entrepreneurship. Or it could be that um, the people have just been in this entrepreneurship realm for a bit longer. Um, by the time that they've done the survey. 65% of the respondents had a post-metric qualification. So we see that there is some level of education or some level of um, competence that we can find there or um, at least something after what they were just giving at school that might be able to support them at the end of the day. And then more, of a, more than a third of the sample uh, that were actually surveyed while being entrepreneurs or running their businesses on the side will, were still being um, employed full time. They still had a full time job that they had to go to and all of their entrepreneurial activities had to then be on the side or after hours. Um, which is quite a lot of people from the sample as well where we can start to think that they are not necessarily at that point where they might be able to support themselves from just their entrepreneurial venture, or it might just be that they are still looking at how they can have two sets of incomes. Um, not much information available about that. But what is quite interesting is um, the motivation for these entrepreneurs to actually start their businesses or their companies and the top three that were found in this survey were that they either identified an opportunity, some other gap in the market that they could play into. Uh, they wanted to be their own boss, um, wanted that sense of independence, or they wanted to find a way in which they can util utilize their skills um, that was not perhaps matched or uh, met in their current professions or current careers. Interestingly enough, only 4% of the entire sample that were surveyed said that they became entrepreneurs due to the fact that they couldn't find a job. And um, if we look a bit broader, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor Report, the GEM report for 2016-2017, um, stated that your efficiency-based economies, uh, like South Africa, uh, should rather be opportunity-driven um, they're necessity driven. 
And that is very much reflected in what we see in this survey, where almost half of the sample identified an opportunity, but only a very small percentage of the sample started out of the necessity. And interestingly enough, the um, GEM report also stated that um, in their actual survey that almost three quarters of South African entrepreneurs were rather opportunity driven. And this actual statistic is higher than the average for other um, efficiency driven economies and substantially higher than that of any other African regions at the end of the day. So really looking as if South Africa has a great deal of um, entrepreneurs who are able to identify opportunities and act on that gap in the market to start their own thing. Some of the reasons that I listed for why they think they might be successful is having strong personal networks, um, knowing people that can assist you, having the support from your um, family or other people in your closest, closer vicinities, um, but also then having business support um, whether that is in the way of um, some kind of training on how to run a business or some backing by an actual business. Um, proper business planning, very important to have that from the onset, to know what you want to do and what you want to achieve and to be able to put that forward. And then also access to funding. Very difficult to start something without um, the resources to be able to do that. What this report also then further stated was that 78% of the respondents um, that I actually surveyed were at some time in their um, careers or in their entrepreneurial ventures. They were engaged with either a training program that focused on entrepreneurial skills or with an incubator that helped them to actually harvest or um, develop that entrepreneurial abilities or skills at the end of the day. The major challenges that they highlighted um, as, as entrepreneurs specifically in South Africa was firstly finding your client or customer base, knowing who that will be and how you can contact them and actually get them to buy into your product or service. An inability to raise funds, to gather the resources that they need, a lack of guidance, not always knowing what to do and how to do it having to fulfill too many roles, specifically when the companies are just started or their businesses are just getting off of the ground, having to fulfill so many roles in that specific company or business setting and that it gets overwhelming. Slow sales or even some lost sales may be due to more established competitors, but then also the unpredictability of business, specifically now in the changing world of work. Um, but then also the unpredictability of customers, uh, not necessarily always knowing that you will have the same customers coming back time after time after time at the end of the day. In light of this, then, um, we want to ask the question, how can we become more entrepreneurial for an organization, for individuals within the organization? And the meta theory states that there are two rules um, to becoming more entrepreneurial. The first there is the individual, so the ingredients of the actual person. And this has to do with the amount of information or the knowledge that is stored in this person's memory, in this person's memory. What do they know? What exposure, experience, knowledge have they had? What do they actually currently possess? But not only this, they also need to be able and willing to connect those pieces of information in new meaningful ways. Being able to identify trends, see links between information or see patterns that other people won't necessarily be able to see as easily. The second rule is that there has to be an entrepreneurial ecosystem. It is not possible for people to innovate if they don't have the resources. Um, if they're not allowed to do so in their actual current, current roles, and if they are not encouraged to innovate, they need to feel or know that it is a safe environment for them to be able to fail and learn from that failure and try again. The failure shouldn't be something that is punished, but rather something that is seen as a learning curve. When we have these two ingredients, um, we get what 
meta sees as your innovation output, which is then the combination of the interaction between the entrepreneurial talent, the individual and the ingredients that make up that individual, and the actual entrepreneurial ecosystem in which that person functions. This is relative and contextual. Um, it is never an absolute and general rule. Um, you cannot always say that higher entrepreneurial talent will lead to higher innovation output. You need to foster that in the correct ecosystem and vice versa at the end of the day. It's not something that is just automatically going to lead to the outcome. Moving a bit on or further to innovation, because it has already been brought into a lot what I have been saying about entrepreneurship and about the importance of entrepreneurship, but also because according to Meta, your entrepreneurial talent and your actual ecosystem or these elements of being an entrepreneur leads to more innovation. I want us to look at the innovation bus. The reason why I'm calling this a buzz is because by simply doing a quick Google search and doing a quick search on uh, the TED Talks website, I found that over one and a quarter billion results are available um, when you just type in innovation. And on TED Talks, there is over 290, 295 to be exact, talks on innovation. This is really a topic that people are interested, the world is interested. And we as um, practitioners or people in organizations need to also be very interested in the word innovation and what it means. In literature, then, innovation uh, has many, many different definitions and it has been linked to many different concepts. And I just wanted to highlight a few of them for you today. Some of the concepts that um, we see closely aligned or almost synonymous with innovation would be developing something new or something novel. Um, it could be adapting a current process or adapting a current product, even applying a new use um, to your existing product, using it for something else or a new approach to how you used to do business. Very important to provide actual value to the consumer, but also to the organization within which you function being able to identify opportunities, and then also the transformation of knowledge. Again, being able to use that knowledge that you have and make meaningful links from that. And just to highlight the references on the side, you'll see their references from the 30s and the 50s. So innovation is really not a new term. It's something that has been with us for a long time and something that people have been interested um, in for a very long time and something that isn't going away anytime soon. In terms of innovation, I thought it would be very interesting to just look at um, a bit of a glimpse of South Africa and um, South African innovations. And I compiled a list, and this is most certainly not all of them, but just a few that stood out for me, of actual um, innovative products or innovative services but examples of innovation that has either been developed in or by South Africans that are currently being used worldwide. And you will see a couple of them there, but I just want to highlight a few of them. For instance, the um, tellurometer, and this is actually the first successful microwave electronic distance measurement tool. Um, it is a light, compact, and um, portable device that can actually accurately measure long distances of up to 50 kilometer that basically gets used to um, revolutionize map making. And it was um, developed here in South Africa um, by Dr. Trevor Lloyd Watley. I also want to look at um, cheaper solar power, for instance. The University of Johannesburg has found a way to use micro thin metallic film that actually makes solar power five times cheaper than the previous method that used um, photovoltaic cells. And then the um, Salmic Scholars, for instance, as a final example, um, was developed by a farmer. Um, it's actually a device, a tracking device that contains a cellular device with a SIM card. 
he developed it in order to be able to protect his animals against theft, but also against predators. And how it works is that when there is some or other um, disruption in the normal movement or pattern of behavior among the livestock, um, that cellular device within the collar actually calls or sends a distress call to the farmer to make them aware that something odd or something weird is happening with their livestock for them to be able to go and investigate. Like I said, just a few examples, and there are many more. But what this tells me is that we live in a very innovative country with people who have lots of potential and lots of entrepreneurial talent to identify and to develop at the end of the day. We are definitely not slouching behind any of the other countries um, if we just look of the wonderful things that have already been done in South Africa. What I've said so far, along with my current slide that you can see, really for me highlights the need for us to be able to measure entrepreneurship and innovation. In a recent um, Deloitte report, um, it stated that 72% of the organizations um, regard innovation as something that is important, that is actually crucial. But only 31% felt that they actually knew how to address it that they actively knew what actions or what plans or processes to put in place to keep up with, but also to get ahead at the end. And established organizations, like I also stated earlier, are really experiencing an on onslaught from your younger, your startup companies, the ones that can be seen as more innovative, um, that are coming into the market and playing in the same market as some of these more established companies and being able to offer your more edgy solutions due to advances in technology, but also due to their more innovative stances that they have. But very important for us to still remember is that technology is not what makes you innovative. People do. A company can have all of the technology in the world, but without the people to operate the technology or to advance the technology, they will still not necessarily be innovative. And this is so beautifully captured in this quote, so I just want to read it. More than anything, it requires having people in the organization that have an aptitude and expectation for continuous improvement. It is still great people rather than processes that make great products. Um, your robot won't innovate. It will be a person that's able to identify patterns or links between pieces of information that will be able to come up with the innovation. The reality of business longevity is another point that I want to look at. If we just look at some of the statistics about that, 88% um, of the Fortune 500 companies that existed in 1955 are no longer operational. If we look more locally, it is estimated that about 71% of South African startups and small businesses will fail within their first year of trading. It just highlights that no matter how long you've been there, you need to be able to remain competitive. You need to be able to adapt to the changing world of work, to be able to identify how to be more entrepreneurial, how to be more innovative. And also, if you are starting out, this could give you an edge in how your business can actually survive and thrive. We need to be able to tap into that entrepreneurial talent. And like we said, and like the theory of the meta suggested, um, one of the key ingredients is the individual to be able to identify that entrepreneurial talent um, within that actual individual. And this is where we come to the topic of today and the actual instrument that I want to discuss with you going forward in this presentation, which is the Meta, um, a wonderful tool that we will really delve into and um, get to know a bit better in the following couple of slides. So the meta is the measure of entrepreneurial tendencies and abilities, and it was developed with the purpose of assessing individual entrepreneurial potential. 
in other words, what would be the individuals likely would to contribute to the entrepreneurial success? Um, it was a collaborative effort between the University of London and also Harvard's Entrepreneurial Finance Lab, the University College London and Goldsmiths, with lots of people who are really experts in the field of entrepreneurship um, working together in the development of the actual tool at the end. If we then look at the development of the meta, um, it was developed through a content analysis of over 100 years of entrepreneurship literature in order to be able to identify what the DNA of an entrepreneur is. The literature that uh, they looked at covered fields like economics, sociology, management, politics and psychology. And because there was so much literature available, it was very difficult to identify what the exact behavioral dispositions to measure were. So I really spent a lot of time analyzing the information, analyzing the literature to identify key themes that they saw as prominent um, in relation to entrepreneurial talent or entrepreneurship. And the four prominent themes that I found were um, creativity, opportunity identification, proactive exploitation, and then the creation of value via long-term vision or planning. There are, of course, many other elements or facets of entrepreneurship or um, characteristics of a person apart from these four themes. But the meta team sees them as sub-facets rather than the prominent themes that um, are included in the development of the meta. So the meta model then looks at how these four dimensions interact and interplay with one another, your creativity, your opportunism, your vision and your proactivity to actually then lead to innovation that will lead to business growth, which is the organizational outcome that we would want to achieve. And by being able to look at the four dimensions and um, what a person looks like in terms of those dimensions, you can make certain inferences about their capacity to innovate and then to contribute to the business growth. If we then look at the scales of the meta, the first one um, that we look at is entrepreneurial creativity. And that is the ability to generate innovative business ideas and it relates to nonconformity, to originality and a preference for novel experiences. The second one is opportunism, and that is the tendency to spot business opportunity. And it relates to being alert and being informed and being able to detect future trends. The third scale proactivity is your tendency to be proactive about projects and to want to get stuff done. This scale relates to your energy, your confidence, but also your self-determination. And then the fourth scale is your vision, which is then the ability to see the big, bigger picture and the motivation to bring change and to actually create progress. Um, this scale relates to your values and having a higher sense of purpose. Looking at the composition of the meta, the assessment consists of 40 items. Um, so 10 items per scale. The assessment can be administered to individuals 16 years and older, but it does require that the participant have a grade eight reading ability. It's not a timed assessment, but it generally takes between 10 to 15 minutes to complete, um, depending of course of the read with we, uh, the speed with which a person reads, um, et cetera. It's not currently available on JVR online. It is, however, an online assessment, but you access it through the JVR Psychometrics Bureau Department. So you would contact Bureau and request a meta links from them for the candidates that you would like to assess. And then you will still be able to get the reports through Bureau delivered to you to be able to do your interpretation and then feedback. We are currently in the process um, in collaboration with the Meta team, with the developers, um, to do the South African research um, and compile a South African manual or a manual supplement with South African data, with South African norms at the end of the day. 
Um, there isn't anything that I can present on that yet, but just be aware that we are busy with that. So keep watching this space. Um, hopefully we will be able to launch the Meta South African research within the next couple of months as well. I also want to briefly look at the report that you can get from the Meta. Um, just to highlight to you some of the things that you can find in this report and how it can be of value to you, for instance. The first page that I want us to look there is where it talks about your total meta score. And you will see it gives you there a little bit of a graph that looks at your total entrepreneurial potential or your total meta score. And then it also gives you your score on each of the four scales. And you see there that it is split into your low, your average and your high sections. On this first page, they just give you an indication of your total score and then um, an indication of what the rest of the report will be able to give you, what information will be included. And if you look at the very first um, paragraph, it also gives you a very brief indication um, of on what level, low, average or high, your actual entrepreneurial score is then. What it then does is to go and look at every scale individually and it starts off with giving you a definition of that actual scale with some information about um, why it is being measured and then also your score for that specific dimension and what that then means in terms of whether it is low, average or high and you will see on the graph there that the score that you are busy with is highlighted in color while the rest is um, grayed out. What it then also gives you, which is really nice, is um, some behavioral implications for that specific score. Um, and this will, of course, be different based on whether or not it's a low, an average or a high score. But for instance, there it says that this specific profile suggests that the person is practical, detail orientated able to apply focus at ended energy to a single project or task. Then goes on to give some more um, explanations or descriptives there. And then what it also does is it gives you, um, even for your low score, some strong points and some soft spots um, to be able to look at some of the things that the person um, still contributes and brings to a team or to the organization. Because just having a low score doesn't necessarily mean that you only have weaknesses. There are still specific strong points for that individual based on that score that gets discussed there. And then they also continue to give a section about personal development for each one of their actual scales in the format of what you should keep doing, what you should start doing, and then also the things that you should stop doing to be able to come up with some developmental steps or guides or plans with the individual in the feedback session. To help them gain a better understanding of their own entrepreneurial potential, but also to help them to be able to develop some of the areas that they want to develop. The next thing I want us to look at is disruptive talent, and it is a concept that we are going to look at very briefly, but it is also the name of a second tool by Meta that um, is able to identify disruptive talent and we'll get into that a bit more um, in the coming slides. But disruptive talent can be seen as the potential to carry out successful entrepreneurial activities within an organizational context. And we've heard the term before, uh, we are very aware um, in our industry of disruption and we've talked a bit earlier when we looked at the need to be able to assess innovation and entrepreneurship of how in a, or disruptive innovation can actually impact on businesses. And I thought it might be nice to just highlight some examples of disruption that might be familiar to all of us. For instance, Netflix that has changed the way in which people engage with watching television or series. Uber, um, a very, very, well, the largest transportation um, company in the world that doesn't own a single car, for instance. Um, Airbnb, um, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, having a new way of dealing with money that um, 
doesn't physically exist that you can't physically hold on to, but in the form of electronic um, money or the, the cryptocurrency, um, your 3D printers, um, where you can now actually print um, things instead of having to go through a whole this, um, manufacturing process like we did in the olden days. So really changing the way in which things get manufactured and in which things um, get put onto the market and the speed with which that can be done as well. And then one that I found particularly interesting is Li-Fi, which might not be as familiar yet, but it is a actual technology that is faster than Wi-Fi that um, looks at how actual um, transmitters, Li-Fi transmitters can be installed into LED light bulbs in order to be able to transfer the signals um, to the people within that room, within that actual area. And it's something that is already being offered um, by companies. So really some interesting, some innovative and some exciting things happening in the world um, and things that businesses need to keep up with. The disruptive talent um, tool from the Meta then consists out of three scales. Um, and the first scale there is your ideation, or we rather call them domains instead of scales, actually. And ideation is basically the generation of innovative or business ideas, and then execution, which is the realization or application of innovative business ideas, and then leadership, which looks at leading innovative people and teams. Each one of these domains then consists of three traits or subscales, if you will that tap into them. And we will be discussing each one of them in detail in the next slide. But then the tool also further measures three characteristics of disruptive talent um, that may have a detrimental impact on a person's performance and career progress. And we call these um, your behavioral derailers. Looking at some of the scale descriptions for the first um, domain ideation, the traits there, like I said, curiosity, creativity, and belief. And curiosity is the strong desire to know and to learn new things. Your creativity then is the ability to generate original ideas or to create an invent. And belief there is the propensity to act on conviction rather than trying to please others. The execution domain then has opportunism, proactivity, and resilience, with opportunism being the tendency to spot new business opportunities. Proactivity is your energy and willingness to get stuff done straight away. And resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and to demonstrate determination and perseverance. Leadership, the last domain of entrepreneurial or disruptive talent, consists of vision, authority, and stability. Vision there is the tendency to have a meaningful mission in life and to be able to see the bigger picture. Authority is the tendency to take charge of situation and command others. And stability um, is the ability to remain calm and optimistic under pressure. Looking then at the behavioral derailment, um, the three ones highlighted there are dominance, hubris, and mercurial. Dominance being the tendency to be overbearing and driven by power. Hubris being the tendency to act with excessive pride and self-confidence. And mercurial, the tendency to be impulsive, unpredictable, and eccentric. Briefly looking at the comp composition of the DT, it's just short for disruptive talent. Um, all of the information is the same as for the meta, except that this scale consists of 120 items, where the meta only consisted out of 40 items. Um, still 10 items per scale, and still administered individuals 16 years and older with a great age reading ability, and all of the rest still very much the same as for the meta. In terms of your disruptive talent report, it starts off by giving you an overview of um, what your relative position is on each one of the traits or facets in that specific work domain. Um, and it gives you then your scores and whether or not that is a low, an average, or a high score, as you can see over here. With the entrepreneurial talent or the domains of disruptive talent, 
um, the highest scores for ideation, execution, and leadership would indicate that you have the um, high potential there. But with the derailers, you would want to rather see the lowest scores. So when you do get a report um, for the derailers specifically, the low scores would then be highlighted in green, because that would be um, rather what we are looking at in wanting the higher scores that can actually then be detrimental to the ability to innovate. It then also gives you an indication for each one of those traits under the domains, um, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what your overall score is for that specific um, trait, and um, what your potential then is, whether it being low, high, average, and then some um, behavioral implications, again, in the form of what you should keep doing, what you should start doing, but then also what you should consider to stop doing at the end of the day. And it goes a bit further then and to look at the complete domain um, of ideation, of execution, of leadership, and give you, in terms of um, your combined scores or your profile across the traits in that specific domain, um, what are your strengths that you can build on, what are your weaknesses that you should address, and what are the things that you should consider stopping. Um, that really enables us to give some very nice feedback and develop mental information to a person. Um, nice little summary um, also for when you are developing your developmental plans with one of your candidates or clients. In terms of the interpretation, the guidelines there for the percentile ranges for low scores are from a 0 to a 33, for your average score from a 34 to a 65, for your higher scores from a 66 to a 100. Um, but of course, very important to use the meta and its scores with other well-validated assessments. Never only report on a single score or a single scale, but rather look at how they all speak together and interpreting them within the actual bigger context. Um, like I said way in the beginning, just because a person have a low score doesn't necessarily mean that I don't have strengths or things that they can still contribute to a team or an organization. And but just some key points to remember, your individuals with higher scores tend to be your individuals that have more success at work. Um, everybody can improve on some of aspects of the entrepreneurial potential with some guidance and some developmental plans. And also very important is that people often do not realize that entrepreneurial behaviors are desirable at work. We tend to have this image in our head of entrepreneurs or people who have their own business, their own startup, that are very successful, Richard Branson jumps to mind. But people can actually be entrepreneurial within organizations, and organizations also need people with entrepreneurial talent, like we saw from the literature earlier, to be able to stay competitive in the changing world of work. Um, but because people don't know that they are allowed to be entrepreneurial if they are not the owners of the company, but just employed, they do not necessarily know when or how to develop this potential. And then that is where you as a practitioner with this tool can come in through coaching and through guidance to help them to develop some of those aspects. Um, but also organizational members with high meta scores may be the ones that are more likely to seek out ventures or opportunities to start their own business. Uh, so there is a bit of a higher risk that they might leave if um, they are not understood or if they do not, do not have the capacity to be entrepreneurial in their current roles or if that um, potential is not managed carefully. So really just some things to remember when you interpret it, specifically um, for teams as well, knowing when they are members in teams with higher entrepreneurial potential, how they must be managed differently from those with some lower entrepreneurial potential. Then we get to research, which is an area that I am very interested in as a research psychologist. But I'm just going to briefly look at um, some of the research that is available in the um, current manual. Like I said, we are still busy with the South African research. But we'll look at what is in the current uh, manual for the tools. And then also um, we will look at some South African research that has been done 
in various contexts, like I promised in the abstract for today's webinar. In terms of the reliabilities, um, we see acceptable, good to very good um, reliabilities for all of the scales of both the meta and the disruptive talent um, scale. Nothing there that um, is worrying or that jumps out of something that we need to be concerned about. You can see the Kronbach Alpha being reported for each one of the scales there, and it really looks good. It's something that we are very happy with, and it shows us that um, both of these assessments uh, are consistent in measuring what they are reporting to be measuring. So very happy with what we see there. And we also see that it is based on um, fairly large samples. Um, so something that we are really comfortable with. The developers of the meta um, also in the manual report on correlations between the meta and other assessments to just highlight the validity of it, to show that um, it is in line with what we expect based on literature and based on theory. And if we look there, um, I'm just going to report on the ones that they did with an assessment of the big five personality factors. But for your interest, um, you can also in the meta manual look at other ones that I report on, like um, with the um, Holland's theory of vocational interest, but also emotional intelligence, for instance. But what is really interesting for me here is that we see some significantly strong correlations um, between optimism, creativity and vision, specifically with the openness um, to change scale or of the big five factor, which is something that we would expect. People uh, who are more open to um, experiences um, would be better um, able to, for instance, spot opportunities, have more of a chance to be creative and um, enhance their vision or broaden their vision because they have had maybe some more um, exposure than other people due to their openness to new experiences. Um, but like I said, um, the manual does report in full on all of this. Um, but just another interesting one, for instance, is neuroticism that has a negative correlation and then significantly with most of the scales and then the overall meta total which is again something that we would expect um, based on literature, based on what we actually know about um, people who score high on neuroticism. With the disruptive talent um, tool, they went, the developers went and looked at um, how that would correlate with the number of innovative achievements in a sample of, about, of 150 people. So they ran correlations between the actual scores on the scales of the disruptive talent and then the number of the innovative achievement for each one of those individuals. And we saw that um, all of the correlations between the different traits and domains of disruptive talent um, were positive. Were, well, firstly, it was positive correlations, but they were also all significant at the P smaller than 0 0.05 level. I'm um, showing that there is real evidence that people who score higher on the disruptive talent scales will tend to have more innovative output. So really showing that the tool is effective in identifying those individuals that are most likely to innovate. In terms of our South African research, I just want to highlight two studies there that we did and some of the main findings from, that, from them that just jumped out at me immediately. So the mega pharma study was one that I was personally involved in, where we looked at the um, meta disruptive talent tool um, and also qualitative um, information, qualitative data that we obtained from a sample of highly successful or mega farmers within the South African context. We wanted to be able to um, draw an initial profile of what the entrepreneurial profile of these mega farmers are. What are the things that make them successful? Are we able to identify some traits of disruptive talent, et cetera, that make these farmers as successful as they are? And what was really nice to find there is that these mega farmers had high scores on your scales, like curiosity, opportunism, 
proactivity, resilience, and authority, specifically these scales. And um, from the qualitative data that we then merged with the um, metadata, we could see that these farmers um, showed a willingness to learn and they believed in utilizing their opportunities and being able to take calculated risks. They also had a more hands-on approach and wanted to get things done. They saw challenges as potential opportunities. Um, and they seem to value being able to adapt to changing environments and seem to be capable of doing that themselves as well. Um, we also then saw that they tend to take more of a leadership role in the farm and more of a business approach. So running the farm as if it was an actual business organization or business entity. The second study there is an ongoing study where um, we are looking at correlations, but then also group comparisons between an entrepreneurial questionnaire and the Meta DT, Meta Disruptive Talent Tool, for a foundation that focuses on youth initiatives. And just some of the preliminary findings there that I want to highlight for you is that um, all of the traits from the DT um, across all three of the domains um, actually correlated significantly and positively with um, a tenacity to overcome challenges. Um, but in also um, curiosity, creativity, belief and opportunism, those traits correlated positively and significantly with um, wanting to take initiative and to drive action. And then also um, the ability to decide what work you want to do, sort of valuing that as a person um, had high correlations with all of the traits within the ideation um, domain, but then also with opportunism, authority, vision, and interestingly enough, with hubris and with dominance. So wanting to um, be able to do your own thing and decide what that is, uh, really correlated with those ones. So again, things that one would expect um, based on what we know about these scales. And then just for interest sakes, when we looked at um, comparing different groups, um, we specifically looked at people whose businesses or um, ventures are still operating versus those whose ventures, businesses are no longer operational. And the ones who were still operational, those people scored higher on creativity, belief, opportunism, proactivity, authority, and they scored lower um, on mercurial. And then we also looked at uh, people who were business owners versus those who were employees. And um, those who were business owners scored higher on all of the meta DT entrepreneurial domains, all of those traits, and lower on hubris and dominance than those who were employed. So again, showing in South Africa that the tool is able to distinguish between people that are entrepreneurial, that seem to have more success in the entrepreneurial field and those that aren't as successful in the entrepreneurial field. And then, like I said, we are busy with the um, South African research to come up with the South African norms, and hopefully those will also be available within the, new, within the near future for us to be able to also communicate them to you. In summary, then, of the research, the Meta and the Disruptive Talent is based on over 20 years of research in entrepreneurship, a lot of information, a lot of data available, and lots of articles um, that are available about the meta and using the meta in, com in combination of other tools as well. The evidence so far is promising for the use of the assessment within the South African context, and we truly believe that the assessment will make a valuable contribution to understanding innovation and growth in organizations. Some of the application areas where the meta can be used for selections, but of course, in combination with other assessments, because the meta and the disruptive talent are very specific tools that assess for entrepreneurial talent in and of itself. So making sure that you have another battery of assessments that tap into other elements that you want to um, include in the selection process can be used in the design and implementation of talent management strategies um identifying those people that might be more engaged or less engaged based on their entrepreneurial profiles can be used for coaching the development of entrepreneurial potential 
can be used to map or even create cultures in organization by identifying those spots within the organizations that are more entrepreneurial than others based on the employee profiles, but then also can be used to build your high performing teams, um, knowing what type of profiles that will work well together and being able to know what um, entrepreneurial profile or type of profile you would want for specific departments that need to be more innovative perhaps than other ones within your organization. Also want to then just in terms of the application, go through a case study that um, the Meta developers did in collaboration with Endeavor Brazil, uh, where the aim of the study was to see what Brazilian cities had uh, the greatest potential for entrepreneurial activity and success. This sample consisted of 9,133 people, um, which included entrepreneurs, your self-employed people, working adults, but also housewives or husbands and then unemployed people. They then had a sample of high impact entrepreneurs that was used in the specific study as a benchmark group in which the rest of the population in the sample could then um, be compared, but also the differences between the cities. Um, some of the main results, the data showed that entrepreneurs scoring higher on the meta tend to have significantly higher incomes, uh, create and operate more businesses, employ a larger number of employees and have more profitable and faster growing businesses that seem to survive longer than those people who score lower on the meta. Um, in a comparison with the high impact entrepreneurs and the rest of the sample, um, it was, there were strong differences between the groups um, with the former um, having significantly higher meta scores. So those high impact um, entrepreneurs scoring higher than all of the other ones um on the meta at the end of the day and then specifically uh, between the high impact entrepreneurs and the non-high impact entrepreneurs where there were 10 to 20 percent score difference uh, between the two groups um, but then um the biggest factor that they could find there or the factor or trait that had the biggest difference was the proactivity factor very interesting and these results basically then confirm that the meta is accurate in uh, measuring high impact entrepreneurship firstly, but also that uh, it can identify um, people or predict them what people will be able to um, have those business outcomes or um, higher potential for innovation and then lead to business growth at the end of the day. Um, which is a really nice case study and something really concrete that shows how they were able to use the meta um, to actively look at whether or not people that were already identified as high impact entrepreneurs versus the rest of the population across different levels, if the meta could actually distinguish between that and it was capable of doing that. We are nearing the end. So in conclusion, based on the meta, your successful entrepreneurs are opportunists who through their creativity, drive and vision, create economic or social value, challenging conventional wisdom by practicing innovation that creates new markets through the application of a different set of values. I want to leave you with a quote by Frank Sixth, who is the director of Lika Shing Foundation. Um, that really for me captures the essence and the importance of being able to identify um, entrepreneurial people and be able to cultivate that and um, develop them. He says that nothing is sadder than vital seeds falling on fallow ground. Imagine that the most important idea in a generation for our future is still born simply because it emerges in an environment where there is no entrepreneurial support. For any society, supporting entrepreneurship is not a skill or an edge, it is a duty. Also for me beautifully summarizes what the meta says about innovation output and how that truly is a combination between the talent of the person in terms of entrepreneurship, but also the ecosystem in which that person currently function and how that ecosystem can sometimes, um, at the end of the day, make that idea stillborn, to use Frank's words. 
I have quite a lengthy um, reference list for you that is included in your slides, so you don't have to jot all of them down right now, but some very interesting articles um, that really helped me to compile this and really helped me to conceptualize the importance of um, entrepreneurship and innovation in South Africa as well. Thank you very much for joining me for this webinar. I hope that you um, found it interesting and that you have some new insights or at least learned something during the session. Um, it was truly fun for me to talk about this. It's really quite an interesting topic. If you have any questions about the Meta tool specifically, um, please feel free to um, forward those questions to info at jvrafrica.co.za. If you have any questions for me, also feel free to um, email them through. And then, um, yes, have a lovely day. And um, we hope to also see you in some of our other Lunch and Learn webinars. Goodbye. <laughs>